Hello and welcome to a new segment we're introducing on The Captivating Christian. We're calling it Ghost Bros, and me and my helpful staff are going to be taking on the, the supernatural and the paranormal. Here, I'm getting a reading. I'm getting a reading on this tree that there is some paranormal activity over here on this tree. Oh wait, I, I, think, that's, I think that's just a Gengar on my Pokemon Go app. Bro, he just comes to us and says he wants to do a paranormal hunting show just because he's gotten into those stupid shows on TV like Ghost Adventures and Ghost Hunters and all that crap. For some reason, he said we had to do this in Swigga's house. The main reason we're doing this is because I recently just reviewed a film, and I feel like this film has some kind of evil aura around it. So we're going to get to the bottom of this and find out what kind of supernatural phenomena is flowing around this film. I swear, sometimes he is just such an idiot. Hopefully we wrap this all up before Swigger gets home, because the last few times he's caught us using his place to film videos, he wasn't very pleased. Okay, today we are going to look into hauntings by a ghost that is code named Ella on the uh, streets. Uh, Chris, sweetie, is there a reason why you're talking like that? Bro, I know, right? He's, he's talking like a Philip DeFranco video. While all that's going on, let's talk about a movie. Because that's not distracting at all. The Last Vampire on Earth is a movie someone made. It was released straight to video in 2010, and was clearly meant to be a ripoff of that one franchise meant to be popular amongst young people. The Hunger Games. No, no, I'm just kidding. It's obviously those Twilight movies that um, apparently nowadays some people like to champion as uh, feminist movies, even though I remember everyone hating them when they first came out. And so, an Italian man named Vitaly Versace, armed with a Sony Handycam, $5, and a ham sandwich, decided to make his own film like this. Clearly the same mentality that went into Plan B. He was so determined to make his own romantic teen drama with horror fantasy elements into a franchise that started on a series of terrible books that he even commissioned some woman to write a book for him. A woman that could quite possibly be a friend of his mother's. The movie was later picked up for distribution by the company Echo Bridge Home Entertainment, who clearly wanted to sell the film as another movie in the Toilet franchise, complete with a poster that features people that aren't even in the actual movie, and the Taint Light logo font. Well, let's see why this movie gets two fangs down. <laughs> this is Last Vampire on Earth. We see our main character, Chloe, as she begins her first day of college, as she's being made fun of by some hipsters. You see, that's what makes it different from the other movie. That one was about high school, this one's about college. It seems one of her early classes that she'll be taking is drama, as she's part of a Dracula play. Well, I'm happy with my part. I've always wanted to play a sultry female vampire. Who knew that lit class would bring all my fantasies to fruition? Do young women in college talk like this? Uh, is this the kind of girl who's into those, um, those Chinese cartoons? Uh, I, I believe they're called, uh, 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 Animu. And one of her co-stars is this guy who looks like a troll ogre. Oh, oh wait, that's, that's supposed to be the vampire in the title. Okay. We figured this out because he goes to an ambulance that's actually someone's mom's minivan with a red cross drawing hanging in the window, as he gets his fix of bagged blood. We then get an almost 10 minute scene of people reading their Dracula script, which is actually the script for the movie. You can tell because you can see the characters' names written down. And for some reason, we get these zoom-up angles on everyone's faces. Seriously, what is with these weird close-up angles? So these two decide to get closer acquainted with one another over some coffee and more script reading, as we figure out a little bit more about these two. Chloe comes from a religious family, while Edward here wants to become a doctor and deal with diseases. In pursuit of what we deem the most desirable kind of love, the romantic heroes. We then see Chloe's pastor father, Bobbert McFoolahan, who invites Jacob here to a home-cooked family dinner. Or a night of KFC. They call themselves real Christians. Ha! Everyone knows real Christians eat Chick-fil-A, not KFC. <laughs> Don't be silly. What are you majoring in? Hematology. What exactly is that, dear? Well, it's the study of blood. Basically, I want to work in helping find cures for blood diseases like AIDS and diabetes. In our religion, we believe that blood is sacred and we are not allowed to eat blood of any kind or receive blood transfusions. If we were to do so, we would be shunned from the church. I see. So if you were in a bad accident and lost a lot of blood, you'd be in a real predicament then. <laughs> 
And now we get a Hallmark movie moment where we see these two doing loving boyfriend and girlfriend things together, including the inexcusable act of holding hands in public. She's supposed to be a Mormon. Does she not know that kind of thing is forbidden? Okay, so what were you able to find out, team? Bro, Julia, just, just look up if that Bella ghost thing is even real. Alright, well, according to this, the myth of the Bella Ghost seems to go all the way back to the days of stuff like, you know, Cthulhu and the Babadook, uh, the, the Baba Yaga, the Penengan, Pazuzu, all that kind of thing. Usually haunting the bodies of teen girls with wannabe gothic tendencies, according to what it says here. And what, have shite taste in the literature? Well, apparently there's a video that demonstrates what happens when someone is taken by the Bella Ghost. We can give that a quick watch. Amazing book! Hmm. Hmm. Real spooky stuff. Whoa. Whoa. Bro. Whoa. What was that? Who knows? Maybe we, uh... Maybe we blew a fuse? Amazing book! What in the hell was that? Anyway, Chloe goes over to Ed, Ed, and Eddie's house and comes across the bags of blood. And putting two and two and two together, she decides to confront him on his obvious vampire secret in the woods, in one of the many scenes that's obviously supposed to replicate one of the scenes from the Twilight Sparkle movies. Pony fanboy, did you write that? How old are you? Twenty. How long have you been that old? For about 2,028 years. Wow. That's a long time to be by yourself. Did you see Jesus? I heard him speak a couple of times. He was a great man. Oh, he's a, he's a vampire who respects Jesus. Okay, well, I guess he's not a bad vampire. Hash brown, not all vampires, I guess. I got the analysis back from the test, and you had a bad reaction to one of the drugs in your latest cocktail. After that, we see Jake Paul here join them for another home-cooked, I mean KFC, dinner and proceeds to throw it up in the bathroom. And for some reason, the father then invites him to play football outside. Or just simply throw the ball back and forth. All that's missing from this scene is everyone wearing tuxedos and they're standing in a hallway that's supposed to be a back alley. Though, the background music in this scene is pretty good. Had a vision in the vision time. Then my habit got me wider. After another drinking blood scene, Chloe's fat little brother tells the parents that Shrek is actually a vampire because he overheard them talking in the bathroom scene. Naturally, they believe this ten-year-old boy. After dinner, I heard him and Chloe talking. I heard Chloe say that he's a vampire. Chad, they were probably just talking about that play they're doing. No, Mom, I heard, heard them talking about how eating food makes him sick. What? There's... there's just no way. So now, Pastor Father, Mama June, and their fat son decide to form a lynch posse to take out the vampire. And through some very weird editing choices, they then have him tied up in the woods, ready to have him set on fire. And Chloe gets her hands on a gun as she holds them all at gunpoint to leave him alone. All the while this is going on, she does not have her finger on the trigger. And this, my friends, is how Chloe failed her NRA training. He doesn't want to hurt us. He doesn't feed off of humans. He wants to help us. He wants to help find cures for diseases. He wants to help find a cure for diseases like AIDS. Maybe that doesn't mean much to you, but it means a lot to people like me who have it. What? That's right. I have AIDS and it's advancing very quickly. How did we get here? And oh my gosh, she just shot that man. And nobody stops them. They just let them leave and go to their Dracula play like it's nothing. A burning was attempted, someone was just shot. What is going on? A few years ago, I was on a mission trip in Africa. I was helping a group of people at the clinic, and there was an attack. And the film ends with Robert biting Chloe to hopefully cure her, like that would do anything, as the film fades to black as we're led to assume that the sequel would involve Chloe going to jail. Well, maybe it's just me, but, um, this was not a very good movie. The acting is pretty bad, the characters don't really act like real people would. The production itself is on par with a third grader's video project. In terms of a love story, this movie could certainly learn a thing or two from Christian Mingle the movie. 
Alright, well, enough of that. Now back to the storyline segment that had nothing to do with this review. Julia, it seems like you're getting a reading. See if you can play it out loud. Okay, alright. I, I think I'm able to get a reading. Let let let's see what it says this time. I need to tell everybody why Bella, Edward, and Jacob is an amazing love triangle. Well, what, what does that mean? Oh, this means something. I mean, how do you explain the lights going out? Oh, oh bros, look over there. Looks like we actually did just blow a fuse. I'll, I'll get it. Probably not going to believe this, but... The reading says that the audio is coming from somewhere outside our solar system. Out of our solar system? What, like, like aliens? Oh yeah, right, aliens. <laughs> uh, aliens that just so happen to speak an Earth language like English. <laughs> What's next, do you think these aliens are going to come down and try to take our cheese? Ha! Ha ha! Oh, that's rich! <laughs> Bro believes in ghosts, but aliens is crossing the line to him? Yeah, I know, right? But this definitely means something. Go get some of the other sidekicks. Like, go get the, the future media whiz guy. I, I feel like he might have some of the technological know-how to figure this out. I mean, could it actually mean we have life on other planets?